Okay, here we look at question number six. Now, question number six, immediately you notice that you're given a table. So this is a tabular view. Sometimes it'll be graph, sometimes a function. And we're given the time in seconds, the velocity, and then acceleration. Now, key thing on tables, these are discrete points. You do not know exactly what is going on between those points. All we know is that this function is continuous. So you cannot make assumptions, okay? Very important. Also, it's a closed interval from zero to 60. Okay, now part A, using appropriate units. If you don't use the units, you don't get the point, period. Explain the meaning of this expression. Well, notice it's the integral of velocity. Well, the integral of velocity is feet per second, right? So when we take the integral, it's gonna be the antiderivative. So the answer is going to be change in feet, whatever we get, okay? So that's the same if I take the integral of acceleration, which is feet per second squared. So we take the antiderivative, so I'm going back. So we're going to get change in velocity, which is the change in feet per second. Okay, so that is the meaning of taking an integral. So now let's go and see what the exact answers are. Now, since it's absolute value, it's not just going to be change in position. It's going to be change in the total distance traveled. So in order for you to get this point, you have to say it's the distance, and you must use the units. In feet, that's one of the units, that the car travels from 30 to 60 seconds. You have to have both units, and it's change in distance, okay? Now, for the second point, you had to use a trapezoid. Now remember, trapezoid, area of trapezoid. So you're going to take one half of the basis, you're going to add the two bases together, and then multiply it by its height. Well, when we look at this table, now we're going to go from 30 to 60, okay? So looking at the table then, 30 to 60 here, the change in height is 5, right? And then we're going to look at these two values as the bases. But realize, it's the absolute value of velocity. So that's why it's 14 plus 10 divided by 2, so that's the average of the bases, multiplied by the change in height, which is 5. Now we do the same thing for the next two. So the next two, it's going to be the average of 10 and 0, okay? And multiplied, now notice this difference here is 15. So that's why we get 10 divided by 2 times 15. And then we do the last segment here, which is 0 and 10, okay? So 10 plus 0, okay, again, we divide it by 2. And then here the change is 10. Some of you are getting a little confused in your trapezoid, so the answer is 185. So a point for the explanation, a point for the value. Um, now part B is very similar. The only thing different is that you have to explain the integral of acceleration. So that is going to be the change in velocity in feet per second. So again, you have to have the units. You must say feet per second from t equals zero to t equals 30 seconds, okay? In order to get the point, you need both units and telling me what it's the change in. Now here, we want to find the exact value. So basically, we're looking for area under the curve, right? Now, we know that the integral of the rate of velocity from 0 to 30 by the fundamental theorem is going to be velocity evaluated at 30 minus velocity evaluated at 0. Now, earlier I said area under the curve. Well, I would have done that if I was given a graph. Um, but I wasn't given a graph. I was given a table. So now I can just plug in the values. So V at 30 then is negative 14 minus v at 0, so I'm looking over at my chart, is negative 20. So we end up with negative 14 plus 20, which is 6. So the change in velocity is 6 feet per second. Okay, so one point for that correct value. Now notice here you get one point also if your units are correct in A and B. So that's a gift right there of one point for the units. So now we've got five points accounted for. Okay, part C. Between 0 to 60, there must be a time. Now, remember, I said nothing was guaranteed, unless, of course, we use our theorems, where the velocity 
is equal to negative 5. So look at this velocity row, okay? Now, we want to find a value at negative 5. Now, notice here, none of these values are at negative 5. But we do see, though, from here to here, if it's continuous, the value changes from negative 10 to 0. So by the intermediate value theorem, then we can guarantee that velocity will be 5 at some point between 35 and 50. Okay? So yes, since, see, and notice how in order to get the point, you have to say yes and refer to the intermediate value theorem. And then to get the other point, you have to point out that v of negative 35 is negative 10 and v at 50 is 0. So therefore, negative 5 is the intermediary between those two points. Now, the exact same thing happens in part D. This time, though, we're looking at when will acceleration be equal to 0. Now, if I look at the acceleration row, now I notice here it's positive the entire time. So actually, I cannot guarantee that a 0 will be an intermediate value on any of those outcomes. So the intermediate value theorem does not work. So is there another theorem that can guarantee that zero will occur? Well, the only other theorem I have, really, is the um, mean value theorem. And the mean value theorem says that, you know, if I have the average rate of change equal to a value, then we could say that it would be equal to the derivative at some value c, okay? Well, so in other words, we want to know, so we're looking at acceleration being zero, so would there ever be a value for velocity where I subtract the y values minus the x values, and that will equal zero? Now look at the velocity column. Is there ever a point in here when you subtract two values, you're going to get a zero in the numerator? That means they have to be the same. Well, yes, there is right here. Notice when t is 0, when t is 25, the, x va the velocities are negative 20. So if I subtract negative 20 minus negative 20, I get a 0 in the numerator. So then I can guarantee that the acceleration will be 0 somewhere between v of 0 and v of 25. So again, for this, you get your point if you say it's according to the mean value theorem, and then you have to point out that the mean value theorem only works when the average rate of change is equal to the instantaneous derivative. Phew! So there you go on question number six.